Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Credential Up Houston. My name is Margaret Fort Fisher. Consider, how would our daily lives be different without oil and gas? I think that is a pretty simple question with immediate excellent answers. Well, our focus today is on oil and gas and the new emerging trends, technologies, training, and employment opportunities that we hope you will find of interest. Our guests are Mr. Brian Weeks, Director of Business Development with the Gas Technology Institute, or GTI. Dr. Susan Stuver, Senior Project Manager, the Gas Technology Institute, and former medic in the U.S. Army. And Mr. Collins Waniri, Professor of Petroleum Engineering Technology Programs at the Houston Community College Global Energy Training Institute, Center of Excellence. Thank you all so very much for joining us today. Indeed. Well, you know, I think a lot of people take coal, oil, gas for granted. And there are some comforts that we become accustomed to. So let's just talk very briefly about the effect that oil, gas, coal, all of those energy sources have on our daily lives. Well, sure. I mean, it's, it's a big part of everyone's daily life, particularly in uh, the U.S. and Western Europe and some of the developed countries. Uh, less so, perhaps, in, in some of the not as well-developed countries. And so uh, it's everything we do from uh, you know, going to work in the morning to this, this room that we're in right now is, is powered by energy, which is derived from uh, coal and natural gas and, and oil. So it's, it's just, uh, our lives would be dramatically different. And I think a great recent example would be uh, Hurricane Harvey here in, in Houston. Imagine, you know, how much everyone's life changed when, you know, the power went off and, and you couldn't uh, travel uh, on the highways. Um, you should, certainly wouldn't, would not want to live like that every day. And, uh, so anyway, yeah, you, it's a big know, change. That's a, a very good point. And it's so easy for people to become so comfortable in the state of what some call creature comforts, as it were, mm -hmm. that we forget how important those resources are. Mm -hmm. And so your view, I presume, would be very, very similar, Dr. Stuver? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that still makes uh, fossils, uh, you know, whether we're talking about coal or oil or gas, is that you can store it and you can move it. Um, the alternative energies are important and they are offsetting the, the fossil industry and the gas and the, uh, and the oil, but we really have a problem with storing it. Do we, do we want to coat the planet with batteries uh, and how do we dispose of those? Uh, because that's how you store power on the alternative side. So having that uh, means of producing power in a way that we can collect and store is important. And I think a lot of people also forget that petroleum's uh, petroleum products are used for plastics and uh, and you know uh, materials and the clothes that we wear and so they're they're um, they're deeply involved in uh, the production of those types of things as well. In our yeah, that's society. a very good point because with Mr. Waniri, he has students who come to his classes, for example, and many of them drive their vehicles, others of them might take public transportation, and those are others, as you said, Mr. Weeks, that factor into the energy field and how dependent we are upon that. So, Mr. Waneri, with your students who come to you, what is their view of the importance of what they're studying in petroleum? Technology. Well, well, you know, with the evolution of the energy industry, you know, from oil and gas production um, up to um, the use for up to alternate energy right now. Um, so most of them come to our program because they understand there's a growing need of um, technical resources to help produce the oil and gas, to help market it, to help transport it and to help in the development of the energy sector. So they come in there, um, they take courses to enable them to be technicians, you know, work in the field. Um, they also take courses for, so that they can work with computers, do some simulation. And, you know, so there's a high demand, right, because they understand that employment outlook will be great right. in the industry. It's increasing. 
uh, by 2020 or so, they will have a lot of need. For Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so with the Gas Technology Institute, what is the focus primarily? I thought it was very interesting when I was reading about what you do with the research and development and the proposals and so forth that you help to advance in the emerging technologies. So tell us just a bit about that. Well, thanks. Um, GTI, Gas Technology Institute, uh, we've been around for a while. We celebrated our 75th anniversary about two years ago. And uh, GTI is really focused on facilitating the introduction of new technologies into the natural gas industry um, and related energy industries. So we, we're, we're focused on late stage and uh, near commercial but not commercial technologies. We're not for profit, so we, um, we don't commercialize any of the technologies that we bring into market. But currently we have over 500 technologies that have become products that are now uh, part, of the, um, you know, part of the marketplace. And, that number is growing almost daily, and uh, we do that through bringing uh, technologies to our commercial partners and then handing them off. We're a bunch of engineers and scientists. We, we never really, uh, uh, I guess, we're clever enough to do like the intel inside. <laughs> so there's, there's technologies that, uh, that you may be using yourself that, uh, that were developed or helped develop uh, through GTI that are you know, sold through major brands and so on. That's, that's so fascinating. And with Dr. Stuver as well, you are an environmental scientist, which is exactly. really very impressive. And you had mentioned earlier about some of the environmental issues that might be associated mm -hmm. with various energy sources. So what we're going to do is to pursue that conversation and we'll talk about some of the trends uh, in the industry. But right now we're going to, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back, so please stay with us. HCC's online college is officially open. This not only means online classes, but also online degrees and certificates. You can now credential up anytime, anywhere. Join the fast-growing number of students getting their full college education from anywhere they use a laptop. HCC currently offers 32 fully online degrees and will offer 71 next year. You no longer have to find a way or time to get to college. HCC brings college to you. Welcome back to Potential Up Houston. We're talking about the changing dynamics in the energy sector. And joining us in our conversation are Mr. Brian Weeks, Dr. Susan Stuver, and Mr. Collins Waneri. So before going to break, we talked about the environmental concerns uh, in the energy sector. And you're an environmental scientist, so tell us what you're finding, Dr. Stuver. So in my experience, what we're seeing, and particularly at GTI, uh, I work on the, uh, in the energy uh, and gas delivery uh, side of the house, which is a lot of pipelines. And so the technology, the monitoring technology, we have sensors that are inside the pipelines. We have sensors that are external to the pipelines uh, at some of the facilities like compressor stations. We have monitors that we use when we fly over and we're doing surveys of these pipelines. Um, then there's also satellite data. And this technology is moving really fast. And so having the ability to quickly review and validate the different technologies that are coming online so that they can get to market is essential. And so that's a big, it's a big challenge for the companies and for research institutes. So, so are there hazards associated with the gas, the natural gas, that are necessary for us to be aware of versus the hazards associated with the oil or coal? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think on the, on, on the gas delivery side, of course, it's, it's leak detection, but uh, we have uh, some of the some amazing technologies that are coming out that monitor uh, thousands of miles of pipeline uh, you know, in real time. Mm -hmm. The issue comes in how we, uh, how we manage the data that's coming in. 
Uh, we have, I mean, we're getting into the realm of big data. So it's, it's fairly easy for a system to say, you know, hey, I'm sensor number 432 and I've seen what could potentially be a leak, but when you multiply that by thousands of sensors over thousands of miles of pipeline, and then we have data that's in different formats, right? We have data that's numerical, we have data that's image data and video data, we have satellite data. And so we have these terabytes now of data coming in, and I think we're moving towards the deep thinking computers, uh, we have cybersecurity that we need to think of because we're transmitting this data wirelessly. So um, uh, the technology with the, with the deep thinking computers and the algorithms that can help us manage and analyze that data, as well as uh, how we store it and how we move historical data into the digital format as sure. well. Right? And that digitization is really very important. Uh, in some of the uh, conversations there had been discussions about with natural gas that the damage to the environment is not as great as it is, for example, with like an oil spill. But yet some of the sources make reference to like flaming faucet uh, and so forth. And so with your experience and expertise in leak detection, mm -hmm. uh, that certainly helps to make a difference in determining mm -hmm. where that leak might potentially occur mm -hmm. so that it could be corrected. Right. So I really, I really like that. Now, of course, there are other trends as well. And I think you were commenting on this one area, then we'll go to Mr. Mm -hmm. Weeks. Yeah, um, so Norma, right now, the industry, there's a growing um, um, trend in digitalization, right? Using artificial intelligence to, to program um, um, equipment, right? And also collecting data in mass volume for visualization. So with that step right now in that direction, also there's also cyber, cyber security monitoring. Um, there's that technology and also we are moving into using more gas, being able to store more gas as LNG, and also so to, to reduce um, emission, right? And also, there's also a gas to power technology. That is, so in that line, you know, this, the trend is moving towards using more gas, of course, using oil and using more gas to develop technologies that can be applied in the industry. And that is consistent with what you're focusing on also, Mr. Weeks. So tell us just a bit about that. Sure. Uh, trends. Let's talk about technology trends. Sure. And the, uh, particularly focused on natural gas. GTIs focus primarily on natural gas. Oil is a bit secondary for us, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly very, still very important. Uh, uh, Dr. Stuver and Dr. Winery have touched on uh, a couple of these already, but just to sort of recap, the number one, I, th I think probably the most important trend uh, in the industry right now is what I call decarbonization. And this includes a movement toward renewables, it includes uh, higher efficiencies, uh, it includes uh, uh, emissions uh, mitigation, um, all sorts of different ways to, to decrease the carbon footprint of the energy industry, both from a production and as well as an end user perspective. So that's, that's one trend. Next trend uh, in, in terms, again, these are technology trends, not necessarily socioeconomic trends, but next trend would be uh, sort of a nexus between energy and water. For example, it takes depending on the formation, so on, anywhere from five to 10 barrels of water to produce a, a one barrel of oil. And that's on the production side. On the uh, power generation side, it takes a tremendous amount of water to generate electricity uh, at, a, at a power plant. So those are just a couple of trends, uh, commercial decarbonization, the nexus water to, to um, uh, water and energy. Uh, there's some other trends we can talk about as yeah. well, and we will uh, but continue. we probably don't have time right now. <laughs> but we will. We will in the next segment. We will continue mm -hmm. our okay. conversation about some of the trends as well because this is really very important. And then we'll go into collaborative partnerships as Great. well. So Great. please stay with us.
Are you interested in working in the oil and gas or construction fields? Houston Community College offers fast-track training programs that will prepare you to work as a roustabout, onshore or offshore, logistics handler working for distribution companies, scaffold builders on work sites, and much more. Training can be completed as soon as one week to one semester. Get started today. Call our Industrial Technology and Energy Department at 713-718-2070 and start your new career now. Welcome back to Credential Up Houston. We're talking to our guest today about trends in the energy sector. So we're delighted that you are, are still with us. And our guests today are Mr. Brian Weeks, Dr. Susan Stuver, Mr. Collins Waneri. So you were talking previously about trends, Mr. Weeks, and tell us just a few more of the trends that are in the industry. Sure, uh, one that I'm really focused on uh, is uh, trends in mobility. Um, mobility, transportation, vehicles, uh, both passenger vehicles, um, heavy-duty vehicles, uh, marine, rail, transportation, a whole gamut of, of mobility. Uh, there's tremendous changes going on. Uh, driverless cars, of course, electric vehicles, um, fuel mix changes, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. In California, we manage, uh, we being GTI, manage a consortium of vehicle uh, OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, and uh, and state agencies, and so on, to, to roll out hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. So there's there's all sorts of really fascinating things going on in the transportation industry. I'd love to have this whole segment just to focus <laughs> on that. And uh, so anyway, there's that. And then there's also uh, the uh, the trend in the sort of the more traditional industry of, of infrastructure build out. A lot of the pipeline and industry industry infrastructure. Um, that we rely on today was built in the 1950s, 1960s, and some even earlier than that. So a lot of that needs to be rebuilt, rehabbed, and, and updated. Then the final trend, which um, both Dr. Stuver and Dr. Winery touched on earlier, is tr data. Yes. Um, there was a statistic thrown out by actually the uh, uh, president of Baker Hughes uh, recently that I'll, I'll re-quote, uh, who mentioned that only about 2% of the data that we generate in the in energy industry, we actually use and understand. So that leaves the other 98% of data right. that there's a lot of room for interpretation to, to, make, it, to make the industry more efficient and, uh, and more responsive. Well, I, I see the heads nodding, yes, <laughs> we agree with you. And so, you know, it's so fascinating. I was reading about LNG and you mentioned that earlier in the natural gas. And with Port Arthur, they're going to have the LNG there. We know about Brazos Port. So this is really going to, to make a significant difference. And with all of the trends that you have referenced and with LNG as well, what are the competencies that students will need as they prepare to go into the industry? Uh, Mr. Waniri, let's start with you and then we'll go to Dr. Stuver and to Mr. Weeks. Yeah, um, so um, right now at HCC, um, we have a lot of courses that we teach. And um, one of the courses is giving them the fundamental of, you know, knowing the, know the math involved in most of the um, programs. Also, they know the theory and applications of some of the equipment that are used in these facilities. So um, courses like natural gas courses would be good also teaching some hands-on courses in um, knowing how to operate and troubleshoot those equipment will be very good for that. Very so, good. Yeah. Dr. Stuver? I, I, I agree. On the instrumentation side, as the instruments that monitor these pipelines become more advanced, we are going to need folks that are able to review um, and validate these different pieces of technology. And then once they're commercialized and installed, then we need people who can maintenance and calibrate and, uh, and manage and troubleshoot these instruments. Uh, some of them are automated, so we need to understand on the automation side. On the data management side, we're going to need cybersecurity. We're going to need telecommunications 
uh, because of the wireless um, aspect of, of these instruments. Uh, modeling and computer science and programming AI uh, because we have image data and we have to uh, have computers that can comb through terabytes of images and tell us what it's seeing so that we don't have a, a human being taking months to go through this 2% of the data. We want to look at 100% <laughs> of the data, right? So we're going to need computers to help us with that. And that will be certainly very efficient so that you can detect where the issues are and what will be needed very quickly in order to respond to the public. And so with respect to the collaborations as well and the competencies, what are your thoughts? If, uh, if I could add one more thing to uh, students in training and yes. so on. I'd like to say that uh, I think there's a perception amongst a lot of students, um, particularly those that go into the, the, the STEM uh, uh, curriculums, that you know, to, to a glamorous career in technology would be to work for Google or to work for Facebook or to work for um, a, a video gaming uh, company. Let me, let me tell you, if you want to change the world, if you want to do something good for society, go in the energy industry. That's, that's the industry that really changes people's lives. And if I could share, a, I, we were talking before the segment started about this, a, a World uh, Bank um, statistic that shows a real correlation between a decline in, in extreme poverty throughout the world at the same time that the access to cheap, reliable energy has grown. And there's a real correlation there. And so to me, that's a, that's a wonderful Thing to be able to say about your life that you've gone into a career that really helps people and you know that is so important and I think a lot of our students if not the majority of them come to us with that mm -hmm. thought in mind that they want to change the world so I appreciate your sharing that mm -hmm. we're going to take another break and when we return we're going to have questions from our students who are enrolled in the global energy training program COE, our Center of Excellence here at HCC. So stay with us. I've seen people's lives change just by attending a class at HCC. Some of them might not have the financial means to go to a four-year university. That doesn't make them any less, quote unquote, smart than the kids who go to a four-year school. HCC is easy to get to. It's easy to apply and easy to become a part of. It gave me so much confidence. Once you finish your two years there, you can transition into a four-year university or go into the workforce. It's affordable. It's accessible. It changes lives. Welcome back to Credential Up Houston. We'll now go to Brittany Pacheco and our students who are with the Global Energy Training Institute. Brittany? Thank you, Dr. Ford Fisher. I'm here with one of our HCC students who has a question for you. Okay, my name is Abu Inyok and I'm a student at Northeast Compass taking a petroleum engineering technology program. And I've come to this show to ask a question. My question is uh, on LNG. What, what can a technology do on LNG to make it more, more safer? Well, um, with LNG right now, um, the plants are normally um, all inspected. Um, the equipment are all spec for the um, gas they're going to be re receiving. So um, because of the gas is liquefied, right, there's less worry for emission, right, because the gas is goes through the pipeline, you know, it gets um, um, cleaned up, right, gets liquefied. So actually the emission from LNG plants are very minimal. And I think that technology helps to reduce um, the um, impact of CO2 emission in, in the atmosphere. I have another one of our HCC students here to ask uh, our guests a question as well. Hello, my name is Azamat. Uh, I'm current, currently enrolled for uh, HC Northeast Campus for Petroleum Engineering Technology degree. And this is my third semester. And my question is, uh, what are the odds, what are the possibilities of getting a job in oil and gas industry, whether it's rig or uh, office jobs uh, after completing this program? Is it possible for me like 
to continue my degree in a bachelor's degree at one of the universities or just complete my degree and uh, get a job in the RIC or office. I think some, some great tips um, that you can use, first of all, is to get as many certifications as you can while you're getting your two-year degree. Because when you go out and you look for employment, those certifications give an employer, even with a two-year degree, they give us a good sense that you know what you're talking about. And I think more importantly, um, you need to network. So petroleum engineer, join the Society of Petroleum Engineers. Do more than just join. Call up the president of SPE and say, how can I get involved? How can I volunteer? You'd be amazed at the number of industry leaders that are in these working groups. And they can get to know you so you can start networking with them. Uh, and then get a mentor. Right, uh, you know, someone that is in a leadership position. And remember that when you start your dream job, it doesn't stop there. You need a mentor to kind of help you navigate your professional pathway through the company as you grow. Excellent, and you mentioned the Society for Professional Engineers. Petroleum, Engineer. Petroleum Engineers. Engineer. So mm -hmm. you are connected with that, with yes, our students. I'm the um, SPE faculty advisor. Excellent. For HCC. Um, Global Energy Institute. And it's, it's wonderful to have that yeah. uh, relationship with them. Great yeah. collaboration. So excellent questions uh, from our students and thank you so much for your responses to them. And of course, so many of them want the certifications as well as you indicated. So I'd like to get recommendations from you now. Uh, Mr. Weeks, Recom what, where, do we, where do we go from here in terms of, as we look at training opportunities, as we look at the future of oil and gas, as we look at providing that opportunity for more and more students to change the world? Any recommendations? Well, thanks for the question. And coincidentally, I was at a uh, forum uh, back in October of uh, last year just a few months ago on uh, that the industry put together here in Houston on the job or workforce challenges uh, for the remainder of the 21st century. And, and there are several challenges within the industry. The, the good news for students is the industry wants you. I mean, I, I can do my Uncle Sam uh, imitation <laughs> here. But uh, there's, a, there's a strong need for uh, 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 people who, um, I don't want to say young people because people of all ages to, to enter the energy industry and bring their talents, whether they have talents from other industries or they're just right out of school. There's a, there's a, there's a huge need. Um, training has not been strong in the energy industry and there's a recognition that uh, partnerships with organizations such as HCC, by the way, I'm so happy that we're here at HCC talking about energy. That's, that's, that's wonderful and it's, it's the beginning of, of potential partnerships that, that universities and the energy industry uh, players can partner to develop and, and make available these kind of training programs to, to make the workforce ready for the challenges of this, this very exciting and transitioning energy industry. Well, let me just share with you that we are absolutely delighted and we're honored that you are here with us as well, GTI, and we look forward to further conversations and collaborations with you. So we thank you so much for an excellent program today. We'd like to thank Mr. Brian Weeks, Director of Business Development with GTI, Dr. Susan Stuver, Senior Project Manager with GTI, and Mr. Collins Winery, Professor of Petroleum Engineering Technology at the HCC Global Energy Training Institute. And we also thank our students for joining us today and we thank you for watching as well. So please plan to join us next time and always remember to credential up. <laughs>